let me ask a follow-up question if I could. So this, this SARP procedure that you were telling us about where there's more, essentially more cuts than yeah. a surgical assist MSE, is, is that only necessary because a tooth-borne expander is limited as to how much force it can exert so that when you have a bone-borne expander, you actually don't need as much surgical assistance? Again, very insightful question. Yeah, so what, what we want to avoid, um, especially with a SARP, we don't want to just flare out the dig dental segments. We don't want to just tip teeth. Uh, so again, you have to make sure that there's uh, enough release and resistance uh, to not tip the teeth, but expand the bone. Uh, with a bone-borne device, it doesn't rely on the teeth. So you are expanding uh, at the bone tissue level. Right, right. So then, um, you know, essentially the SARP, you could say has become obsolete in the era of the MSE. I don't, uh, I, I'm not, I'm like not fishing for gossip, out. but. Yeah, I never like to throw the baby out with the bathwater. And I always tell my MSE patients that if whatever reason, I, you always have to think, you know, uh, who's a, a big athlete now, um, a big, you know, my bone structure is not gonna be the bone structure of a, a Warren, I'm an old guy, I'll say Warren Sapp, or, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of a big popular football player now, I, I can't think of anybody, but. Nadama Kong Su. Who, who, do you have somebody? Nadama Kong Su. Whoever that is, he, I'm presuming he's huge, anyway. There's people who have bone that is uh, almost paper thin, and you also have people whose bone is like concrete and very dense. So uh, long and short of it, uh, whenever I have my discussion with uh, the MSC uh, during the consultation, I do tell patients, look, you know, this is a very reliable, very reliable way of expanding the maxilla in adult patients. Uh, however, there is a chance that you may not get the full expansion and you may need that hospital surgery to release those other areas of resistance if they do impede the, the, the expansion. Um, I always have to say in medicine and dentistry, uh, you, there, there are no guarantees. And, and anybody who says something works 100% of the time either hasn't done enough of them or they're not telling you the truth. So you, you always have to have, um, as, uh, as you guys talked about in the uh, previously, uh, you have to have a plan A and you have to have a plan B. And sometimes you even need a plan C. So uh, you, you have to have a surgeon, uh, to people out there, you have to have a surgeon and orthodontist that, uh, that are experienced in, this, uh, in these types of procedures that if plan A doesn't get you there, you know, they have other plans to, to, to get you to the optimal result. Uh, beware of one-trick ponies. That's what I have to where some guy that says this thing does it all because that's I haven't seen that in medicine and dentistry in reality yet. Understood completely. Um, just a, a, a last thought, but ev even for someone with really robust stubborn bone structure, they would still benefit from a bone borne expander combined with the, the more extensive cutting than they would with a tooth borne expander with all the extensive uh, yeah, I cutting. Would, yes, I, I do feel that the uh, and I do feel that it bears out in the literature that the bone borne expansion is more effective. Okay. And uh, just to wrap up this topic, could you just um, mention briefly what the dome procedure is and how that compares to what you do? Yes. Uh, I was actually talking with Dr. Ting uh, prior to this, and uh, I, I was actually pleasantly surprised to see that the dome procedure is very much the surgical assisted maxillary skeletal expansion. It's it's a surgical assisted MSC. Uh, its indications uh, are a little bit different. They don't primarily want to treat uh, dental arch deformities per se. Uh, their, their main goal is uh, upper respiratory airway syndrome, things like that, where they want, or people with high uh, narrow palatal arches, they want to increase that nasal floor width to get uh, more nasal volume and decrease uh, nasal resistance. But uh, reading the literature, um, it's, it's very similar. It's the, basically the same type of cuts. 
and using a bone borne device to expand it. And, uh, and that's another thing that I like uh, working with Dr. Ting on is that we, we do things that are evidence-based. So we don't um, kind of pick up the newest fad out there and say, hey, this is for everybody. You know, what we're doing is, like I said, it's been based on literature that started over 100 years ago and is built on from there. Um, and the dome procedure is basically that as well. They've taken uh, the less invasive, safer cuts on a SARP, added the power of a distraction osteogenesis device like the maxillary skeletal expander, combining those to make the, the expansion that the patients need. I see. So, so, uh, so dome would essentially be a little bit more cutting than what you do, but... Um, a, a, no, I, it, it, the cuts are, are quite similar. Okay, so uh, yeah. would you, would you the, say... Is dome synonymous to what you what you do then, essentially? From well, my estimation, from the the papers that I've read, uh, yes, dome okay. is uh, very much a similar thing. However, uh, their literature, I believe, is more in the ear, nose, and throat, the otorhinolaryngology literature, and their their main objection, or excuse me, main objective is uh, nasal floor expansion and uh, decreasing upper airway resistance. Whereas with Dr. Ting and the MSC, surgical assisted MSC, you also get the added benefit of dental correction with the expansion, as well as the upper airway improvement. So okay. it seems like it's two different goals, but we're, we're using the same vehicle to, you know, get to achieve different goals. So is Dome like a, a trademark name or something? Is that why, are they like a brand? It doesn't sound, it doesn't sound like it's, a, it's Dome uh, for the audience out there. It, it stands for Distraction Osteogenesis Maxillary Expansion, which is what MSE is. It's, it's right. basically uh, a distraction osteogenesis device. Uh, okay. I was uh, listening to you uh, describe a uh, mandibular distractor where it, where they make the cut down the, the median cut down the mandible and put a bone borne device to expand it. That's distraction osteogenesis. You decrease resistance using cord economy cuts. You put a screw in device and that expands over time. 